So Scopa, what is it? Maybe you learned it years ago, but forgot it. Maybe you heard of it, but think it's an Italian type of pasta. Sure, after this, let's play a round of Cavatappi. Whether this is an introduction or a reintroduction, let's have a look at this classic card game. First off, like many Italian Americans, Scopa is more than just a game to me. I've been playing this game since I was a toddler. My nana, Clara, the famous internet chef, she taught it to me and we played thousands of rounds over the years. It's a great game for friends and families alike. If you visit Italy and spend any time with the locals, knowing how to play this game will allow you to access true Italian culture. Just don't win more games than they do. Just, just don't. Scopa is an Italian card game using a 40 card Italian deck. It's one part of the great Italian card game trilogy. Scopa, Briscola, and Tresette. This is a game where you try to score as many points per round and be the first player to reach 11. It can be played with two to four people, individually or as teams. The word Scopa is an Italian word for broom, or more on point for this, sweep. Sweeping will come into play later as it's one of the ways to score extra points in the game. Like many Italian words, Scopa has a double meaning, and since this is a clean video, I will leave that to your own imagination. Okay, before we go any further, let's talk about the cards. We won't be using your standard 52 card deck. No clubs, no spades, no diamonds, no hearts. We won't be using the 52 card deck, but rather the more pleasing metric style 40 card deck. These cards have an incredible history, and if you're interested in that, please check out my video about where these cards come from. Okay, let's play an open hand game. We'll learn the rules. The goal of the game is to be the first player to reach 11 points. This happens over several rounds. At the end of the round, the player sorts out their cards to see who won which points. The player who has the most cards earns one point. The player who has the most denarii or gold coins earns a point. A point goes to the person who has the seven of denarii, or diamonds. A point goes to the person who has the most sevens, known as primera. There's more to that rule, which we'll cover later. So that's a total of four points, which could be earned in a round, plus a point for any scopa earned. We'll see what a scopa is in a bit. So those are the max amount of points you can earn, right? Wrong. This is an Italian thing, which means the rules are not universal, and this is where you must choose whose rules to follow. I was taught by my Nona Clara, the famous internet personality. In her Sicilian American gameplay, the Ace of Denarii, the Ace of Coins, is also worth a point on its own, bringing the total possible round points to five, plus any additional scope. Since she was never wrong, that's the version I'll cover here. However, there are many other variations. Please check on this video for other scope variations, linked right above. Okay, let's play. So the first thing you're gonna do is shuffle, and then you'll offer the deck to your partner. You wanna be my partner? I'm gonna play with my nine-year-old son, Benjamin. Benjamin, put your hands in. He's gotten so big. So right now we're gonna play a round of open hand scopa. Okay, so cut the cards, Benjamin. The first thing I do is I deal three cards to every player, myself last as the dealer, and then I put four cards in the middle which is the pot. And we'll be playing off the cards in the pot. The way I like to deal, and I've, I've seen this happen in Italy, is I deal one to the opponent, one in the middle, face up, and then one to me. Back to my opponent, one, middle, myself. Back to my opponent, his third and final card, middle, up, myself, middle. Typically, the Italians will arrange their cards in this sort of rectangular, uh, fashion in the middle, but you can do whatever you want. You can be messy, you can be really OCD and make it perfect. Uh, you can do it however you like. I think we're gonna do it like this just because of the, the playing space. Uh, let's flip our cards up. All right. So remember, these are the cards in the middle. These cards would be hidden. Three for the opponent, three for the dealer. Player one here gets to make the first move. Now, here's the main rule. On your turn, you must play one of your cards, and only one of your cards. You can't play two of your cards, you can't play zero of your cards, and you can't play three of your cards. You must play one and only one. Now, you can pick up more than one card from the middle. You could pick up all the cards from the middle, or you could pick up none of the cards from the middle and add your one card to the middle. As long as you play one card on your hand, 
you're fulfilling your turn. Now, how do you pick up these cards? That's the big question, right? Well, you basically need to either have the same numerical value, a four for a four, for example. He could pick up that card, four for four. Or if you can add up some of these cards to make the value of a higher card you have in your hand. For instance, Benjamin here has the Cavallo, that's nine. If you added four to five, you would have nine. And he would pick up two cards instead of one card from the middle if he did the four. And that's really the object of the game to score the most points. And one of those points is to have the most cards. So what would you like to do? Ah, okay. All right. Smart, actually. So Benjamin opted to take the four instead of taking the four and the five because he's, he's a smart player. He's thinking ahead. If he leaves this, there is a card that's worth almost a point on its own, the seven. If you have the most sevens, you get a point. And if at some point he can add two to the seven, he can pick it up with his horse. Keep in mind, you wouldn't have been able to see my hand, but good move. <laughs> so I have a three, a two, and a king. The ray, the king, is worth 10. Almost the value of something here, but not quite. So what I would want to do is put my three down so I can hopefully get the three and the seven from my, my 10 here. As you've seen, we've only played one of our own cards in our hand, so we've depleted our hand down to two cards now, two and two, while the middle is back to four and went down and went up. All right, Benjamin, your turn. So there is a three and a six, and three plus six equals nine. So he can pick that up. Go ahead, pick that up. Okay. And so I have my two. I can't pick up anything here because there's not a two, and there's nothing that equals 10. So I have to play one of my cards. I'll play the two, hoping that it'll come back at some point uh, and add up to 10. All right, well, actually it did. And this is a really good pickup. With this king, I can pick up three cards. I can pick up the ace, the two, and the seven. Because one plus two is three, and three plus seven happens to be 10. I get four cards for that. That leaves one card in the middle, the five. So what happens next? We've both played our three cards. There's one card in the middle. Well, here's this deck. There, This deck will be dealt out throughout the game until it's deplenished. Um, now, one little tip from experience, if you're the dealer, keep your deck that you deal to the players on the other side of your body than from the deck, than from your collection deck. What can happen is you can accidentally combine them and then all of a sudden you don't know which are the ones you picked up and which are the ones that you need to deal out. So definitely try to keep those separate. So I'll deal out three more cards. One, one, two, two, three, three. All right, we'll flip them over. Okay, so Benjamin here has a five in the middle and he has a two, a six, and an eight. Remember, this is the Fonte. She's worth eight. What are you gonna do? Two. Now this is normally a risky move to put a two next to the five because the seven is such a valuable card, you're setting up someone else to get that seven. I think he can see what I have, so he's not too nervous about that. I would probably put this six down, six of Bastoni or clubs, because I have the Fonte, which is eight, and I'm hoping to get two plus six is eight. But it's not my turn. Benjamin, Benjamin picks up three cards from that deal, really good. All right, so I tend to play my lower cards unless they're worth something uh, first, so I have a better option to pick up more cards with a bigger card later. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the Fonte down. Okay, so there's a five, a six, and an eight. None of those add up to the king, so I must put that king down. So we've done our second hand of our first round. We're accumulating our cards, and we still have a lot to play. So we'll play three more cards, one, one, Two, two, three, three. All right. 
Okay, so I have some very low cards here. I have two aces and a four. That's gonna be tough. It's not ideal to have a hand with low cards in it. You're not gonna pick up very much. Uh, Benjamin has two low cards as well, a two, a two, but he also has this nice, this nice Cavallo here. And it's a diamond, it's a Denati, which if you get more than five out of the 10, you are going to get a point. All right, Benjamin, what do you think? Okay, so I'm just gonna hope for the best that this ace will come back to me. So I'll put that down. All right, Benjamin, you're up. So he's got the option of an easy pickup with this two for a two. It's a denarii, that's good. Although he has this horse here, Cavallo, can he get something that adds up to nine? He can. Is there anything better than that though? So one and eight would equal nine, perfect. He can pick that up. What about, what about six, two, and an ace? Is that better? Even though there's a combination that works for you, you're gonna look for the best combination. This combination gives him four cards, so that's like a tenth of the whole deck. That's pretty good. No? Okay. He says no, though. He doesn't want that because he's hoping to get this two back with his, his final card. Playing the long game. There's a, a tremendous amount of luck in this game, but there are a few ways to be strategic. And one of the ways is to think ahead for your whole hand and not for the one move. All right, so I'm gonna play this ace again. And it's Benjamin, he does pick up that two. He gets the nary, and I'm still stuck with no moves. So this next hand is set up great for Benjamin because he has a lot of options. So we'll go one, two, three. Okay. Okay, so I have the ace of diamonds, which is great because in the version that Nana taught me, that's a point. Maybe not in your version, but try this version. I also have a five of denarii, and there's a five out there, and I have a seven, a seven of cups. Benjamin has another Cavallo, which is which has a value of nine. He has the six of denarii, which is great, and the four. What would you do? The six, that's a good move, especially for the Primera point at the end, counting up who has the most sevens, which is more detailed than that, of course. Okay, so there's a four, a five, and an ace. Well, I know that my ace is worth one point, I'm going for that. I'm obviously gonna play my ace to get that one point. But if I didn't have this ace, I might wanna play my five because presumably I could get the four plus one. Presumably I could get the four plus one and make the five. Play my one card, I pick up two cards. And yes, I pick up, I play my one card, I get three cards, three denarii cards, which is even better and one of those which is worth a point. But here's the wrinkle. You can't play a card from your hand and pick up a combination of cards if that same value card is on the table. Since there's already a five, a singular five card, I have to go and clear that card first before I can start combining other cards to equal five. This is something that doesn't get explained right away in the rules and ought to be because it just happens and then you're confused. The person who knows the game has to then explain it and it feels like they're cheating. Uh, they're not. This is an actual rule. So for example, if I had a king and I wanted to pick up the five here and the five here and pick up all those cards, I couldn't do it because there's that king there. I must pick up that king with my king first. I can't add things together. That's the reason I'm going to use this ace to pick up that ace rather than adding the four and the, the one to make five. Okay. So four for four. I'm gonna play my five for five. A king remains. And I must play my seven. And this is a seven, even though there is a, a woman holding a bowl upon her head. 
uh, just count the Cubs. I'm setting up a seven for Benjamin, uh, and he gets to play first. One, two, two, three, three. Okay. Okay, we both have threes, and this might be a good moment to, to say the threes are a bit more decorative than some of the other cards. And why is it that they're a little bit more decorative when they're not really worth much more in this game? Well, it's because they're, they're very important cards in other Italian card games, Briscola especially. There's a seven here. Unfortunately, Benjamin has a Fonte as his highest card. She's only worth uh, a numerical value of eight here. That's seven, she would need an ace down. Uh, five and a three, so not a lot of options for picking anything up. I have a seven, I'm just waiting for my turn so I can collect that seven. So you play the five. So I'm pretty confident he doesn't have a seven. I could probably play something else while I'm waiting because uh, I know he's not gonna pick up that seven because he can't add anything together to get it. Uh, so that's actually what I'll do. I won't go for the seven right away. I'll go for this king, hoping that he gives me something else too. <laughs> you know that I have a three, so you're not playing the three. <laughs> Naturally, you'd probably want to play the three because it's lower, but he knows I have it. So I'm going to play the seven on the seven, take that. There are three cards remaining. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Three. All right, so works out well. I pick up the three. So I collected a seven on that round, which is great working to the Primera. Um, I also got some Denari, which is great working toward that goal too. Okay, so this is the final hand. And there is one additional thing that happens at the end of the final hand here. Oh, tough, tough break. So Benjamin has the Belisette, and that, that's a great card. And it's great for three reasons. One, it's, it's worth a point on its own. Secondly, it's a Denari, so you get a card toward that goal, which is another point potentially. And thirdly, it's part of Primera, which you can get uh, a point from too. You definitely want to put that Belisette in your pile. Okay, what can you do? So, okay, so you pick up the five. I'm going to want to pick up this card next over the horse because it's a Denari. I'll pick that up. Now, let's just pause the game for a second here. There's one card left in the middle. If it was my turn and not Benjamin's, and I picked up that card with my horse, a horse for a horse, and sweep the table of cards, Scopa, I swept the table, I would get a point just for doing that. Um, that's the extra point in Scopa. That's the, the bonus point. Now, that works at any time in the game. If you sweep the middle of all the cards, you get a point. And what you do is you take that card that you swept, put it right side up on your collection deck, and just build your deck on top of that. And there's two reasons for that. One, so you'll know at the end that card is not just an ordinary card, it's a point. And two, so you can brag to the opponent. That's right. <laughs> and, and more importantly, you're taunting your accomplishment to your opponents visually throughout the whole hand. Look at me, I have that extra point. <laughs> okay, so unfortunately for me, it's not my turn, I can't sweep it. Now there's one time you, when you sweep it, you don't get the Scopa, and that's if you sweep at the very last hand. If you're the last person to have a card and you can sweep it, it doesn't give you a point. But any other time during the game, doesn't matter how many you sweep, you could sweep four cards off the table. You can sweep just one. As long as that middle is empty, you get a point, you get a Scopa. All right, so it's your turn. Three. If you play that, you can get a Scopa with that. Well, I don't know that. I'm gonna play the horse and hope he doesn't have a three here because he could get a Scopa. And you'll play. <laughs> This is a devastating moment for Benjamin because he doesn't get the Belisette. <laughs> he doesn't get the Belisette. He had to put it out there uh, and he knows that I'm gonna get it. I don't have to do anything else because I was the last one to pick up a card. So I just throw my card. And you get a Scopa. I don't get a Scopa. 
Oh yeah, because it's the last yes. one too. Right. So no matter what, if I could or couldn't pick it up with this hand, I've already picked up the la the last possible hand, so I get to collect everything. Now seven and three does equal ten, uh, but it's not a scopa because it's the very last hand. So he gets away with not losing a point for that reason. All right, so we finished our first hand. Now comes the time to count our cards to see how many points we've earned and who ends up with more points and who's closer to the winning number of 11. What I like to do is separate my cards. I put the cards of no value into one pile. I put the denarii in another pile. I put the bellisette and the other sevens, the seven of denarii and the other sevens in their own pile. I put the ace of denarii in its own pile if I have it. And then a scopa gets its own pile. It can be less complicated, but that's just always worked for me. One, two, that's a denarii. Three, that's the bellisette. Four, five, six, seven, that's a denarii. Eight, nine, denarii. 10, oh, that's a seven. 11, it's a seven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, that's a seven, 21. All right, well, as there are 40 cards in the game, I receive 21 of those cards. I get the first point for cards, one point. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, so I have the most soli or denarii, money, coins, however you want to say it. That's a point. I have the most cards, that's a point. I have all the sevens, that gives me Primera. There is a, okay, I'm just gonna say this. When you're playing very casually and you're learning, Primera, let it just be whoever has the most sevens. But Chris, you say, I wanna know the official way to score Primera. It is complicated, but here's a quick rundown on how to do just that. The Primera point is given to the player who has the highest total based on their best card in each of the four suits. The best is based on this Primera point system, but you can't repeat suits. So if you have the seven of clubs, you cannot also put up the six of clubs. The Primera score has no bearing on your overall points other than determining if you win the one Primera point of that round. Why such a complicated way of scoring cards well, there's actually an answer for that, and if you check out my video on Primera, I'll tell you exactly where Primera came from and why it's in Scopa. You can also get one point for every Scopa you made in the game. I earned a point for cards, a point for Denarii, a point for the Ace of Denarii, a point for the Bellisette, that's the Seven of Denarii, and a point for Primera. That's five points. I maxed out the points. So I'm almost halfway to the goal of 11. So I happen to do really well this round. Sorry, Benjamin. Like I said, you don't want to beat an Italian too many times. <laughs> Benjamin played really well, but didn't earn any points this round, and that can change in a heartbeat. This should be enough to get you playing. We'll play one more round if you'd like to see more gameplay. Otherwise, you can skip to the end for a wrap up or start playing on your own. If you're leaving us now, please drop a like and subscribe to our channel so we can make more videos. Okay, now for round two. In Scopa, like most Italian games, you alternate the dealer. So in this round, Benjamin will become the dealer. I'll be the player one. Okay, so we'll flip up. All right, well, here we are, round two, the first hand. Um, there's a lot out here. There's a four a five, a six, and a seven. So there are no aces. I can't pick up my ace of diamonds. I have two cavallos or cavalli, the horses. Uh, is there anything that adds up to nine? Well, four and five do equal nine. I'll do that and then I can get the denarii. I can get three cards. It's a pretty good pickup. All right, Benjamin, here we go. So Benjamin picks up the six for a six, the six of spades for the six of denarii. And Benjamin made the mistake of putting- <laughs> No, no, it's good, it's good. Benjamin made the, the mistake that we've all made of putting your own cards into the deck you're about to deal. And as you see now, he's put his collection deck on the other side of his body, which is a smart move. So I don't have a seven. 
I'd love to pick it up. I'm just going to hope for the best that he puts a two down. Um, put my ace of diamonds down now. Okay. So he puts his four. Uh, I can't pick it up. I can't pick up the uh, seven plus one. I can't pick up the four plus one. I must just play my, my horse. And that's great for Benjamin because five and one is four. He gets the ace of denarii. That's a point. Uh, and he's picked up a few cards. And now he's putting it in the, the proper place. All right. So he'll deal out three more cards. Okay. So here's our second hand. Well, luckily for me, I have a seven. There's a seven down. Not seeing what Benjamin has, he might be able to keep a poker face about that Bellisette there. He might not. <laughs> you definitely want to keep a poker face if you have the Bellisette. And this is really important to point out when playing Scopa, it's pretty low stakes, but people get competitive and they tease one another, they taunt one another. Um, that's just part of the fun of it. Uh, you're going to be playing lots of rounds. It's meant to be casual. It's a game mostly of luck, a little bit of skill, and just have fun with it. All right, so I'm going to pick up this seven here, and that leaves Benjamin with a couple of choices. What should you do? Hoping for the seven, right? So there's one, there's a one, there's a four, I have a five. That's what I would pick up. Benjamin's gonna have to put that seven down and hope that he can get it later. Now, the one good thing, the, the silver lining for Benjamin is I could only pick it up if I have a seven during my hand because two plus seven is, is nine and there's already a horse down. So I can't pick it up with a horse. And I have incredibly low cards, so I won't be getting that Bellisette this round at all. Um, so I guess what I would want to play is I'd say, well, I'll do this in hopes of getting my uh, 2 plus 1 equals 3. Now, for Benjamin, he's got a great hand here. Let's do this in slow-mo because, look, he has the Fonte of Denari, which is a great card. She's going to pick up the seven by getting seven and one. He picks up three cards. The Bellisette, great pickup. Uh, also gets two denarii in the process and three cards total. Really great job. And he puts it in the right deck too. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to play my lower card, which is the three, hoping to get a four at some point. Benjamin has a two. He picks that up. I've had a lousy hand. I'm just going to call it a hand and put down my four. You have a Fonte, she's the Fonte of clubs. Nothing equals eight, so the Fonte comes down to. Okay, so next hand. Okay, here we are, next hand. I have the Ray, the King, 10, six of clubs, three of Denari. Benjamin has the five of Denari, the three of spades, and the two of cups. And the Sicilian deck is great because you have all these small illustrations. On the three, we have the Sicilian national symbol. Five has this sort of Roman Empire chariot thing going on. They're just great cards. Really love the Sicilian deck. You'll find your own favorite deck if you don't have one already. Um, but honestly, the Sicilian is the best. I have a three, a six, and a king, 10. Uh, I can pick up the three. That looks like my best option. So I'll pick up the three with the three and I get the Denari. I'm happy with that. Benjamin, here we go. He's putting down one of his lower cards, the three. Uh, I think because he knows I have a six. Because normally you'd probably want to put the two. Uh, okay, so <laughs> I'm going to play my six in hopes that I can get the four and six for my Ray, my king. There's a lot down here in the middle. I'll help clear that up. I can do the king and the four. I could also do the king and the fonte, the eight. That's two and eight is 10 as well. Uh, and if there was an ace, I could maybe do the, the cavallo and the ace. I'm gonna take the four and the six. If we were playing Primera the, the more strict way, you not only count up your sevens, but your sixes, your fives, your fours, your threes, and so on. And the sevens have the most point value than the sixes. For the sake of this, we're just going to say that Primera is the most sevens. All right, Benjamin picked up two plus three equals five. 
It's a great game for basic mathematics too. The math isn't super intense in this game, but it keeps you sharp. And it's also a great teaching tool for young kids. Looks like we just have two more hands and then we'll be finished with our second round. We'll probably call it a day. Okay, so let's see. What do you have there? So I have a Cavallo nine, a six of, a six of cups and the king or 10 of cups. Uh, Benjamin has the three of cups. It has a house in it. Uh, and then he has the horse, which is nine of denarii, which is nice. And the Fonte eight of cups. All right, so I have the horse. I'm going to pick that up. And now we have a big moment for Benjamin. The Fonte on the Fonte will create a scopa. He sweeps the table. <laughs> And look, he's taunting me. He's taunting me by putting that Scopa card up to show off his victory, his one point victory. Good job, good victory. He earns his point there. And not only does he get the Scopa, but he forces me to put just one card down in the middle. I have to be careful not to put a card down that he might have in his hand. Uh, I'd play my lower card hoping that he doesn't get a double scopa. Sometimes these can just spiral out of control and you can get scopa after scopa after scopa. Do you have a six? Sadly, no. So three and six is nine. Oh, so close. I have a 10. Uh, I don't get it. But he does have a horse, so he clears. Doesn't clear everything, but he takes a lot of cards in the process. All right, I think this is our last hand here. Last hand. Okay. Well, the last hand turns out to be pretty good for me because I have a king. There's a king in the middle. It's my go. I sweep it. I get a scopa. All right. So as you see, I have two kings uh, and one of them soldi. Now I could put the soldi one right side up as my scopa indicator, but that might be confusing when I'm sorting my cards at the end because it's worth a point as a scopa, but it's also a denarii, so maybe I want to separate that. So I'll take the other card and I'll flip it up, and that'll be the one that indicates the scopa. Doesn't matter, just easier to, to see. There it is, taunting my opponent, even though he has his own scopa. Sorry, buddy, caught up with you. So he gets to go, and normally he wouldn't be able to see what I have, so he'd be in a real tough spot here not to give me a card that I might have. I don't know what he has. Uh, I'm hoping to get a seven so I can pick this last seven up. He plays his Fonte. I can't pick up anything, so I have to put out my seven. And luckily for him, that's, a seven, eight, that's, nine, eight, ten. that's eight. Eight, oh, ten. Oh, I thought I was seven. But you could also do. Oh, yeah, I'm just gonna do that, duh. Well, I get it all, Karen. Right, so it doesn't matter. So well, let's let's just see what you could have done. So he could potentially take the eight and the two with the 10 that he has in his hand, or he could also take the one, the two, and the seven as 10 and pick that up. So, but it frankly doesn't matter because since he's the last player to pick up, he's gonna get all the cards anyway, as long as he can pick it up and he can. All right, so that's the end of our round. So now comes the sorting uh, and we're both gonna take our scopas and place them in a special spot. I like to put it somewhere where my opponent can see it so they know that I got a scopa. <laughs> and so does my opponent. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, for the seven, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I have 17 cards. There are 40 cards in the game. I can clearly see that I don't have cards. Benjamin has the most cards. Next, I wanna look at the amount of soldi I have. I have one, two, three. There are 10 because there's 10 of each suit. Uh, so three is not gonna win soldi either. So he gets a point for that. Sevens, I have two, do you have more than? Yeah. So, here, so here's what happens with Primera. If we had the same amount of cards, if we each had 20 cards, we would say cards are shot. 
that means nobody gets a point for cards. If we each had five denarii of the 10 denarii, that would be dead even, it would be shot too. No one gets a point. With Primera, with the most sevens, it gets trickier. Uh, we both have the same amount of sevens. So there's a whole breakdown of the point system. It involves a lot more math. I'll get into that in the other video. But the simplified version that we do with the kids is we see who has the most sixes after those sevens. And Benjamin has, and Benjamin has three of those sixes. So I'm gonna give him the point for Primera. Benjamin has the most cards, that's a point. He has the most denarii, that's a point. He has the Bella Sette, the beautiful seven, the seven of denarii, that's a point. He has the most sevens because he has the most sixes after. Uh, that's another point, four points. And you have the ace, the ace of denarii. That's another point. Scopa. And he has a Scopa. So he went from zero points to six points in just one round. We're six, six. And I, I got nothing. I didn't have the most cards. I had the least denarii. I had the least sevens after Primera. I didn't have the ace of denarii, uh, but I did have a Scopa. So I got one point. I had five. I now have six. Benjamin had zero and he swept and got six. Uh, okay. And so that means we're tied at six to six and we would go on. GG. Normally we would go on until one of us hits 11 or one of us quits. Hopefully no rage quitting happens in your games. It can happen, but this should be a light game. It should be for fun. If you have any suggestions, uh, please drop them in the comments. I'm sure there's a way that you were taught that we didn't cover, uh, but this is just a fun starter way to play the game. I hope to continue this and give you lots of games, lots of variations, and a little bit of history on where these games came from. What's this? It's the Ace of Light card. Once this card is played, you have to like the video. It's just a rule. Thank <laughs> you.